Scott Lucas, who's an international politics professor. He joins me now from Birmingham in the UK. One day to go. Now, tomorrow, when you watch the election on your television or your tablet or whatever, now, you've watched many elections in the past. What exactly will you be watching and tracking? Well, in terms of the presidential race, I think your map set it out very well. There are about 13 swing states. But in particular, I'm going to be looking at Pennsylvania as a start for this reason. Joe Biden can afford to lose Pennsylvania and still win the White House. He can do it, for example, by, well, winning one of the other states I'll watch, winning Florida or North Carolina or the formerly Republican state of Arizona. All of them give him a path to victory because he has a commanding lead in Michigan and Wisconsin, those other two key states that Trump won in 2016. But for Donald Trump, if he loses Pennsylvania, he will not get a second term, point blank. That's why he's devoting so much time to Pennsylvania. That's why he is threatening to call the election early on November the 3rd, election night, and say, don't count the mail-in ballots, and then threatening to take legal action all the way to the Supreme Court. Because as your map shows there, Joe Biden in this tipping point state has a 4.3% average lead. So Trump either needs a huge surge, a huge surge to overtake that on election day, or he needs to find some scheme to overtake that. In other words, Trump loses in Pennsylvania. Joe Biden is the 46th president of the United States if everything is played fairly and by the book. All right. So Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania. What happens, Scott, if polls, the polls are wrong? They were last time. Well, again, we need some perspective here. And that is that, in fact, the very best polls at 538.com were not wrong. They gave Donald Trump a one in three chance of winning, about 30 percent. They said if votes broke a certain way. And we know that Hillary Clinton did win the popular vote, as the polls predicted. But Donald Trump had those narrow wins in Michigan, Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, which made the difference in what really decides the election electoral college. Now, compare that to this year. Joe Biden is an eight to one favorite to win. Now that still gives Donald Trump about an 11% chance of winning on the day. You can never say never, but the path to victory is very much more difficult for Donald Trump. If he achieves it, I think what we can say is, is that Trump still has not only an appeal to a base, but that he can mobilize a lot of voters, let's be honest, predominantly white voters, some Latinos, some younger black voters, but predominantly white voters and predominantly in rural areas. That's if he pulls off the upset. But right now, I think you're not only looking at Joe Biden in the White House, I think you're looking at the Democrats with a very good chance of regaining control of the Senate, which the Republicans control. And if that's the case, the Democrats will have the executive and the legislative branches in 2021. What they won't have is the Supreme Court, which is increasingly conservative. Scott Lucas, thank you very much indeed. And we'll be speaking to you, I hope, over the next few days. Thank you. Thank you.